Hey guys, this is Paul with Coastal Upcycling, and uh, I apologize for the uh, the crude lighting um, in this in this video. Um, this is kind of just like a really quick impromptu video that I wanted to make because we had a bit of an oopsie yesterday. Um, so here's what happened: while I was trying to move one of the dressers that we're painting right now, uh, I have I have my dressers up on uh, sawhorses, and uh, I'm spraying them so all the drawers are inside the cabinet. Well, when I was trying to move it back, I was trying to inch it back a little by little, but anyway, uh, long story short, I lost uh, control of the dresser. It tipped over and all the, the drawers fell out. So we had some damage on the drawers on some of the corners. Uh, they hit the concrete floor and they ended up getting a bit dented. Of course, I was uh, a bit upset for a little bit. Um, but uh, after walking away from the incident, uh, you know, I had some time to, to think and um, came back and looked at, at what the damage was. So let me go ahead and show you what we got. So this is one of the uh, drawers that uh, that fell. And I think there's about five five drawers that uh, that ended up hitting the ground. It's a nine drawer dresser, so about over half of them. Uh, but here we go. So let me show you here in the camera. That little corner right there. There you go. You see how it's dented right there? Okay, so um, the great news about this particular dresser is that it's solid wood all the way through. Uh, there's no particle board, there's no uh, pressed wood. Uh, this is solid all the way through. So the good news is that we're going to be able to bring this back uh, by um, using a technique of a little bit of moisture and heat. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Okay, so first, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to remove a little bit of the uh, the paint and primer that's on there. We want to expose the wood fibers there because I want uh, the water to get down into the wood. I don't want any of the paint or primer to stop the, the water from getting down in there. So yes, I'm chipping off my paint. You know, a lot of times in uh, repair work, you have to make things worse before you can make them better. And that's what we've got going on here. So I'm just using a regular, uh, you know, utility knife blade, razor blade. I'm um, using that to scrape off some paint. You can see that there. Go on the sides also. Removing some paint there. All right. So we've got our area exposed. Okay. Okay, so we got this uh, nice and scraped off. If you, see, if you can uh, see it there. All right. So next I'm going to, just with a little bit of water, I got water here in a jar and a, uh, a rag, just a little bit of rag here. And uh, I have an iron, just a regular old household iron over here heating up. Uh, I'm, I have it on its highest setting, as hot as it can get. And we've got that heating up. So what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of water, soak my uh, little rag here, and then we're just going to moisten the, uh, the corner here, the wood fibers. So make sure we get it nice and wet on the edges where we scraped on the top, and then uh, Go ahead and wet down the whole rag. And then we're gonna place this dampened rag right over the damaged area. Use the tip of the iron right here. So you can try to uh, pinpoint the heat where you want it exactly. Cause we don't wanna put it all over the place. We just want it right here on our damaged area. So you see the steam working. Get onto the sides. So the theory behind this is that these wood fibers have been crushed. And so long as they're not torn, in other, in other words, there's not a, a cut to the piece, um, they, uh, the wood fibers are bent 
and what we're doing is we're adding heat and moisture to them and we're going to get them to swell back up and hopefully they'll line uh, get back in line uh, so that's kind of what we're doing here uh, with the uh, with the iron is the iron the heat and the steam uh, kind of quickens the process here so just keep on going with that and it's coming back let me kind of show you here so as you can see we've got a nice uh, straight corner now so that's uh, that's that part of it so we got the uh, the piece to uh, not look dented anymore so now we want to go and finish the repair so what we'll do is we'll sand this little area because when you add moisture like that uh, again, you're getting the wood fibers to stand up and then you might have some some rough spots, some uh, parts where the fibers are standing straight out and you want to get those to knock back down. And then also with, uh, with our repair, we had to do some scraping. So if you'll look really closely to that, the, uh, you can see where there would be a level difference between the paint primer and then the new piece. So we want to kind of feather that out and get it all to sit flat so not too much pressure we're not going really crazy on this I'm using an old 120 grit uh, sanding disc uh, it's like I said it's old so the grits probably a little closer to 180 so it's not very uh, very uh, rough at all just be real ginger with the sanded area and that's it. That's Next, all you gotta do. what we wanna do is we wanna, we wanna protect this area that we just repaired uh, and we're gonna prime it by doing, uh, we're gonna prime it to uh, protect the area. So I'm using uh, Zinsser's Bin Primer. It's a shellac based primer. This is one of my favorite products out there. Um, it does a wonderful job covering stains and um, any type of bleed through you might have on a piece, you know, uh, when you're painting furniture, a lot of times there's, especially when you're painting raw wood, there's tannins, there's oils, there's all kinds of stuff in wood that will want to see through and uh, can ruin uh, a finished paint job. And if you prime with this stuff, it, uh, it helps block out those tannins and oils from, from seeping or bleeding through. So just giving it a good stir. Uh, we want to get all of those, uh, sediment particles uh, up and suspended in in the uh, mixture uh, no need to get a uh, a good quality brush just a regular old chip brush dollar brush from the uh, hardware store will do just fine just give it a little dip and then we'll just uh, kind of dab on here and cover our exposed area um, do your best to feather it in and get the whole area covered up like I said, uh, texture is going to be important. We don't want uh, one area to look higher than the other once we paint it. So we'll just get a little bit of primer on here. You know, a little bit goes a long way. And don't worry about complete coverage. I mean, we're not trying to make this white. We're not painting this white. We're just putting on some uh, primer here. A good way to think of primer is it's a very sticky substance. Everything likes to stick to it. So it's going to stick to your piece and the paint's going to stick to it. Okay, so that's it. We've got primer on here. Uh, the good news about this stuff is it only takes about 30 minutes uh, to set up before you can paint. Now I've got a really rainy situation out here, so it might take a little bit longer. So I'm going to let this set for about an hour or so. Uh, until it's completely dry and then we'll go ahead and uh, sand this down and we'll be ready to put some paint to finish our repair okay so uh, where we are right now we have went ahead and made the repair we uh, used the iron with some water to uh, re-expand the area to get the uh, area to um, puff back up and, and kind of bounce back to size. Okay, we uh, sanded the area uh, of the repair and then we applied a shellac based primer. And so now what I'm gonna do 
is uh, go over it with a, a sanding block. This is a 220 sanding block. Uh, and we're going over the primed areas. Kind of just getting it to uh, be nice and smooth again. Doesn't take much. Just a quick sanding. Now I've got another a bit of 120 here. I'm just gonna use this for some of these crevices that my block really can't get into. Nice once over. Okay, and that's it. I mean, as you can tell, I spent about two minutes on that. So it's not gonna be a thorough sanding. It's not, we're not trying to get all the way down to bare wood here. We're just trying to knock down some of the paint lines and ridges that I was, uh, that was left behind by the primer. Okay, so the paint that I used on this was um, General Finishes Milk Paint and the color is Queenstown Gray. All right, and we're just gonna go into the can, about a half inch or so. Okay, and then we're just gonna start reapplying paint. As you can see, applying the paint, this is where we did the repair. All right, so we're just uh, getting a nice coat of paint on. So that's it, that is coat number one of our repair. He said if you were to take it back here, I guess the repair is down there. It's a little difficult to see, which is a good thing. Okay, so there you have it. That is our repair of a uh, oopsie daisy drawers that fell out of the uh, dresser. Now this type of technique can be used on uh, all sorts of dented wood uh, mishaps. Uh, so long as the wood is dented and not uh, cut. So if you like this type of information, please subscribe to our channel and uh, share it with this video with a friend. Um, hit that little bell and you'll be notified the very next time a video is uploaded to YouTube. Um, so that's it. That's our video on how to repair uh, dented wood. Um, so go out there, make something great, and we'll see you in the next video, folks. Bye.